Hello, everybody. My name is Chris Snyder. I am an associate professor in the Drake University School of Journalism and Mass Communication, where I teach classes about, among other things, social media, video, audio, photography, web design, and digital strategy. This is my Facebook avatar. We can see how good of a job I did by comparing it to my actual photo in the corner. You can tell me whether I need to work on my avatar or not. I have really built my career around embracing new technology. This is a pretty old photo, um, but this is an old drone we bought in the School of Journalism many, many years ago. And anytime drones were in the news, we would, you know, welcome the media to come in and interview me because I happen to own a drone. This is them filming me flying it one day in, in Meredith Hall at Drake. Uh, and I really try to get my students to do the same thing, right? So get them to embrace technology. Here's a wide range of things from over the years. This is some students doing virtual reality, using Snap Spectacles, and even Google Glass, which came and went and is now a thing again. This presentation really is, is about technology you should be using in 2020, right? So it's that connection of technology and your guys' lives. It's a presentation I give every year at Media Now, give or take, um, but this year I want to make it a little bit different. I want to make this year's list a little more actionable. Uh, in the past, I've made things a little bit more aspirational. You know, if we bought a you know 360 camera, we could do this. But I wanted some very actionable things that you guys could do today. So what I want to talk about are five tech things you should be doing right now. So you can take all these actions and make them happen right now today. So number one is to embrace an early adopter mindset. So to start being someone who is eager and looks for opportunities to be an early adopter of new things. So when you interview for a job or are writing a college application, what do you think is gonna be more impressive to talk about? Uh, to say that you wrote stories like everyone else, right? I mean, people have been writing stories for publications for, for years and years, or to say that you took your school's TikTok account from zero to 5,000 followers. Uh, to me, I think the, the second one would be more impressive because you sought something out on your own and you made it uh, successful. So I want you, it, really it'd be impressive too to say that you took the TikTok account from zero subscribers to five subscribers is all, and here's what we learned in the process, right? So at least trying something new, being an early adopter, I think is going to be a more interesting way to live our lives. Second tip, now that we've got that early adopter mindset, is we're going to try out new tools. So we're going to try out new things. Uh, the majority of people get way too comfortable with what they know, and they don't embrace the new. We learn a couple of things, and we just stick with those all the time. New tools and new networks are coming out constantly. Many of them won't make it in, into the mainstream, but we can learn something from using them, right? For every Google Plus that is a failure, we get a TikTok that is you know, a huge success, so just to kind of give you an idea of how much new stuff there is. So here is a list in the past month of some new uh, products that have come out. So Google launched a Pinterest-like app called Keen. Snapchat launched module-based training for advertisers and brands that they call Focus. Anonymous Camera is a new app that lets you anonymize photos and videos in real time locally on your device without ever going to the cloud. So if you want to film people uh, during protests and not worry about people's faces being on there and getting them possibly in trouble. Uh, this is an app that does this. The design tool Canva, which we've many of us have probably used on the web, launched as a desktop app. Adobe launched Photoshop Camera, a free app with tons of elaborate face filters. So, you know, not many people have access to Photoshop. It's an expensive tool, but Adobe launched Photoshop Camera nonetheless that we can all use. Facebook News, the social network's dedicated section devoted to journalism, launched for all users in the United States. Uh, the TikTok clone Zin jumped to the top of the App Store charts. The Facebook launched an app called Venue, a second screen companion for live events. So that's them taking on Twitter so that you would be uh, using this during live events as opposed to tweeting about them. Facebook also launched Ketchup, which lets you see when your friends are online and when they're up for a voice call, as well as in-progress group chats that you can join. And Facebook also launched a, you know, another TikTok-inspired app for music, music making called Collab. 
So th these are just some new products that launched in the last month that you guys could be testing out and seeing whether you think there's something there or not. Third thing I want you to do is try out new features. So it's not always new apps. Sometimes it's just new features that are out there. And again, just in the last month, here's some examples of things that have happened. So Twitter added audio clips and tweets on iOS devices. So you can record audio and post it to Twitter. Flipboard, which I know many people use for education, added storyboards, a new way to curate and share across the internet. Twitch broadcasting software became available on Mac. Instagram began testing a plan sticker. So there's people on Instagram who kind of look at the code and see what's coming. And so there's a new sticker for stories in the works that lets you make plans with people for a future date. Pinterest, uh, Pinterest new lens feature lets you find products based on your photos. Twitter added availability, availability to uh, save drafts and schedule your tweets. YouTube's new, new chapters feature began rolling out on desktop and mobile. Twitter now lets you customize your lists with a custom header image. So if you're a Twitter list user, which I highly recommend, you can customize those to make them look nicer. And Twitter also began live testing of its new DM chat window on desktop, which provides a messenger style picture in picture display for your messaging discussions on the platform. You know, as we see this switch more away from social media and toward messaging apps. Fourth thing I want you to do is follow the leaders. So follow the people out there who are uh, running these tech companies and seeing what they have to say. So we have access to tech, tech leaders. We can follow them. We can see what they have to say. So a few that you might want to start with uh, following Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg on his own platform. You can go like his page and follow what he has to say and he gives updates regularly. Uh, and lots of things interesting going on with Facebook and privacy and elections and all that. So it's a good place to, to really learn about what's going on in the world. You can follow the head of Instagram, um, Adam Mosseri, on Instagram. He's also pretty active on Twitter. Same username on both. Follow Twitter's CEO, who's just at Jack, on Twitter to learn about what he's doing, he's, what he's planning. his really interesting thoughts on where Twitter is heading in the future. And I also recommend following all of the official accounts of these platforms, right? So all these accounts, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, they have official accounts out there on various platforms, but definitely Twitter to start with. Everyone seems to be pretty active on Twitter. And the fifth thing I want you to do is keep up with what's new, right? So, so let's keep track of what those new things are so we know which new apps to try, which new features to try. And so some different ways you can do that. One is, Product, ProductHunt.com sends out, you can sign up to get a daily email newsletter that will tell you what's popular. This is where people go announce that they have a new product or new feature coming out. Matt Navarra on Twitter is a wonderful follow for if you're a social media fan. So he shares all the new things in the world of social media. TechMeme.com is all about new things out there in the digital and tech world. And then a few uh, kind of research trends that you can look for. So Edison Research does something called an infinite dial, which gives you a lot of data on who's using social media and how they're using social media. A lot of stuff in this past when it just came out about podcasting. The Future Today Institute puts out a yearly tech trends report that will tell you kind of what's trending in the tech world. So you'll learn about what's going on in the world of AI and podcasting and all lots of different areas that they track year to year. And then finally, Mary Meeker does a yearly internet trends report as well, where you just kind of learn about uh, what's trending, what's changing, and just kind of understand where things are going in the future. If you want to an easy button for all of this. I write a weekly email newsletter on what's new in social media. You can subscribe at chrissnyderdesign.com slash subscribe. So I'll check these things constantly and I'll share that information with you uh, once a week on Thursdays. Another option for you. Uh, but my key takeaway for you is the digital media world changes every single day. Uh, embrace that change, learn from it, and will people and people will look at you as a leader in the tech field. So you can be a leader in this area. Uh, that's it for me. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Uh, give me a follow. I'm C Snyder on Instagram. You'll see lots of photos of my children. Bye, guys.